Welcome to the Holy Land in this biblical site of the Mount of Olives. Right here we're on the highest point on the Mount of Olives and there's, and there's here called a Chapel of the Ascension. So this is the place where it is believed that Christ rose uh, and went back to heaven, that he ascended back into heaven and is here according to Zechariah 14 that he will return in power and great glory, also Matthew 24. So of all the places in Israel, I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite places because so much takes place here. This is where God will flip evil and make it subservient to good and righteousness. This is a place where Christ is going to come back in power and great glory and reign on this earth for a thousand years with all believers who have received him. So a lot is going to happen here. So we're going to be looking at a few items from scripture here. This is a video is about the end times right here from the uh, Mount of Olives. This is the highest point on the Mount of Olives. And once again, this is a place that is the site that has been marked out according to tradition. And we have to give tradition a lot of weight wherein Christ uh, ascended and then according to scripture he will return in power and great glory so it's of all the places it's one of my favorite ones so this is going to be a great video so well, here we are inside this chapel. We filmed outside, so here we are inside this chapel. We wanted to show you uh, this rock right here is the absolute highest point on the Mount of Olives. So this whole chapel, this whole area has been preserved and, and set aside for 2,000 years roughly uh, for, for to remember where Christ ascended from and also where he is going to come back in power and great glory. So this is the absolute highest point on the Mount of Olives where according to Zechariah 4, Christ uh, comes back and touches down and from where he ascended back to heaven from. Now in order to help you better understand what we're going to be talking about in this video, we're going to give you a bird's eye view of the events on God's calendar that have happened and are yet to happen. So Christ came in the flesh and he died on the cross for our sins. That's our his first coming. Now we're in what's called the present church age. We've been in that now for 2,000 plus years. The next event on God's calendar, and there's nothing that needs to happen in order for this to take place, is the rapture of the church. This is where Christ comes in the clouds. In Thessalonians, he comes in the clouds, and the believers go up in the air, and they meet him in the air, in the clouds. And then what's ushered in next is what's called the Great Tribulation Period. In Daniel 9, 27, the Antichrist makes a pact with many for seven years, and this launches us into the Great Tribulation Period. Now, it should be noted that the first half of the Great Tribulation Period is a time of peace. This Antichrist makes a pact with many, a covenant with many for seven years, but the first three and a half years is a time of peace. Then in the middle of the tribulation period, he goes into the temple, a functioning temple in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount, and he declares himself as God, sets himself up as God, demands to be worshiped as God, and institutes the mark of the beast so that people can't buy or sell unless they receive the mark of the beast. Then at the end of the great tribulation period is when Christ comes back on the earth, touches down on Mount uh, the Mount of Olives, uh, Zechariah 14, 4. The armies of heaven come back with him, Revelation 19. We come back with him. The angels come back with him. And he comes and touches to the earth, separates the sheep from the goats, and then sets up his millennial reign on earth that will last for a thousand years. And of course, the angels and we in our new supernatural glorified body, we will reign with Christ on the earth over those who came out of the tribulation period who would receive Christ during the tribulation period. So he sets up his millennial reign. He, he uh, rules with a rod of iron, which means perfect justice. During the millennial reign at the beginning, uh, Christ binds Satan and throws him into this pit and seals him for a thousand years and then at the end uh, he's loosed he comes out deceives the nations rebellion against god god wipes him out and then you have the great white throne judgment revelation 20 the destruction of the heavens and the earth the creation of the new heavens and earth and then eternity future in either heaven or hell so we're going to be talking somewhat in this video about the second coming of christ at the end of the great tribulation period when he comes back in power 
and great glory. So this gives you an overview of what is to come, what is to take place on God's calendar. Um, as we said, uh, this is a culminating place where tremendous things happen. So the return of Christ back to this earth, his second coming to this earth, will be one of the greatest culminating events that ever happens on the history of this earth. You have to understand that Christ created uh, the, the, all of creation. He created mankind. We had a fall. We had his plan unfold. We had a redemption in Christ who came back the first time riding on a donkey, meek and mild, who came to save offer his blood to, to die on the cross but he says he's coming back again Matthew 24 many prophecies that talk about him coming back and he'll come back in power and great glory so this is where it all takes place so this is in essence one of the the most dramatic culminating events of God wrapping up his plan for this creation this earth and mankind here before he creates a new heavens and a new earth after the millennial reign so it begins why Christ's return and Christ's judgment at the end of the uh, tribulation period. What we have before us is a great tribulation period that will happen. It says in Daniel 9.27 that, that uh, this Antichrist will make a pact with many for seven years and that launches us into the tribulation period. So we believe in a literal um, prophetic fulfillment of scripture. So we're not taking anything in this sense as figurative, we're taking it literal. So that's going to be our uh, perspective as we uh, tell you and unfold in this video here. So in Revelation 1-7, it says that every being who has ever lived, even the demonic uh, hell, will be opened up to see Christ coming back in power and great glory. So it says, Behold, He is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see Him, even those who pierced Him. And those people are in hell right now. And all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of Him. Even so, amen, it says. And in uh, Revelation 19.50, the return of Christ uh, conquers and flips all evil powers, as we said, it makes them subservient and in submission to Christ. It says in Revelation 19.15, from his mouth comes a sharp sword uh, with which he will strike down all the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And Christ coming back, his second coming after the tribulation, will he, he will come back in power and extreme glory. Follow along as you read this in Matthew uh, 24, 1. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, this is talking about the great tribulation period, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, uh, the moon won't give its light, so you have a, a dark uh, universe, uh, the moon not giving its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven heavens will be shaken. So you have a pitch black universe that is just trembling as it get, as the stage gets set for Christ to come back and it says the powers of the heaven are shaken and then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man and then all of the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to another so Christ comes back in power and great glory and it says all of the nations and all of the all the people will see him and in Revelation um, 6 uh, 16 it says when he opened the sixth, sixth seal, I looked and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth. So once again, we have a black sun that doesn't give us light, and the moon will become like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. So that's the same imagery, the same context, the same uh, scene that is being described in Revelation. Just using a few different words. And, and the full moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree sheds its winter fruit shaken by a gale. And the sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up. And every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and powerful and everyone slave and free hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains calling to the mountains and the rocks fall on us hide on us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of their wrath has come and who can stand so then Christ comes back in power and great glory and it says in um, Zechariah 14 1 through 4 it says he touches down right here where he ascended it says um, 
Um, 14, uh, 1 through 4 says, Behold, a day is coming for the Lord, when the spoil taken from you will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses plundered, and the women raped. Half of the city shall go out into exile, but the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle. On that day, on that day, Zechariah 14, uh, 4, on that day his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives that lies before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from the east to the west by a very wide valley, so that half of the mount shall be moved northward and the other half uh, southward. So Christ literally touches down here uh, when he returns in power and great glory. Now scripture also says that the believers will return with Christ in power and great glory as well. So in Revelation 19 11 it says, Then I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and his head are like, uh, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. John 1 4, he is the Word of God became flesh. And the armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, talking about the believers that come back, uh, white and pure, uh, were following him on white horses. So if you're a believer and you're following Christ, then you will come back to this very spot with Christ riding a white horse along with him. And it says, From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which he will strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread, he will tread the wine press of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. So when he comes back, it's judgment on the unbeliever. And on his uh, robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So he goes on and he says, Come gather for the great supper talks to the birds. He says, come gather. And uh, the armies are gathered together with the kings of the earth to make war against Christ, led by the Antichrist. And they all gather around to make war against Christ, part in the, in, in the Valley of Armageddon and the Valley of Jehoshaphat or the Kidron Valley. All around this area, the nations are gathered to make war against Christ. But he comes back in power and great glory and just absolutely crushes them. And it says, um, in uh, verse 20 it says and the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who in his presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image these two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur and the rest were slain by the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the horse and the birds were gorged with their flesh so Christ comes back and judges the unbelievers and uh, Satan and the uh, false prophet and the demons uh, our judge Satan is cast into uh, a bottomless pit and held for a thousand years. In, um, in also it says that Christ will judge the nations and he will separate the sheep uh, who are believers from the goats who are unbelievers. So that happens right in the Kidron Valley, right below this Mount of Olives that we're standing on. It says in Revelation 14 20 it says, Then I looked and behold a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple, calling with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, put, your si put in your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So what we have is an earth that is moving towards more and more uh, sinfulness, evil, uh, uh, rejection of Christ, uh, immorality, uh, murder, uh, just absolute chaos, and uh, so uh, it says here that now the, the, the harvest is ripe. Now it's come to a point where God says enough, he comes back and he puts in his sickle and he reaps for the hour uh, has come and the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So he who sat on the clouds swung his sickle across the earth and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he too had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar and the angel who has authority over the fire and he called with a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle, put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth for the, its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle across the earth and gathered the grape 
uh, the great harvest of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was tr trodden outside the city, and the blood flowed from the winepress as high as the horse's bridle for 1,600 stadia, which is about 200 miles. Uh, so what it would do is it, all of this takes place, this winepress is right in the, the bottom of the Kidron Valley in between the Mount of Olives and the Temple Mount, the old city of Jerusalem. So that's where uh, the wine press is at. In fact, uh, that's where the Garden of Gethsemane is, and that's where an olive press was. That's where Christ sweat great drops of blood. So in that same Kidron Valley is where this judgment takes place and this wine press happens, and it says the blood runs out of this area for 200 miles, so it will go down towards Jericho. It will go um, east towards the uh, Dead Sea, and then run south down to the Red Sea. So that would be 200 miles. So it goes down and uh, then it goes south, east and then south. So uh, 200 miles up to the horse's bridles, the blood runs. So it is an absolute uh, horrendous sight where I say uh, the, the nations are gathered together in this wine press of God's judgment uh, upon them. So, uh, this, the judgment on unbelievers will be severe. And here's just a partial glimpse of what it will be like. In Zechariah 14, 12, it just gives us a glimpse. It says, And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the peoples that wage war against Jerusalem on that day. Their flesh will rot while they are standing on their feet. Their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongues will rot in their mouths. So, in this wine press, it's almost like they just dissolve. They're just absolutely absolutely crushed um, and then the goats go into the lake of fire so their 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 bodies are uh, rotted and consumed the blood runs out but their spirit and their soul then goes into the lake of fire and then the believers who come back with Christ and their supernatural bodies and reign with him for a thousand years they come back on the white horses and they will reign with Christ right here from Jerusalem uh, for a thousand years and then that those that receive Christ during the tribulation those are the sheep they will go into the millennial reign in their natural bodies and then Christ will reign over the earth uh, for a thousand years and uh, people that went in in their natural bodies into the uh, new millennial reign uh, then they will populate the earth once again and then at the end of the thousand years then they rebel against God he wipes them out and then uh, he um, cast uh, Satan into the lake of fire forever so what can we observe about what has taken place right here every being that has ever been created will see Christ return in power and great glory. So Revelation 1 7. So in Christ's second coming, every being that has ever been created, I believe even the demons, all the demonic world, Satan, uh, everyone in, in hell, there won't be one being, rational being, who has ever been created that will not witness Christ's second coming. And it will be in power and great glory. It says that at that time that Christ uh, returns, in his return, he, he conquers and he flips evil. That's where evil is conquered and now it is submitted to Christ and he rules with the rod of iron and a Christ coming will be in power and great glory as we said uh, the Sun will be dark and the moon will give its light the, the stars will fall and the heavenly bodies will be shaken and it says as the uh, as a lightning flashes from the east to the west then shall this the appearing of the Son of Man be so everything will be dark shaking and then in a brilliant uh, ray of glory as lightning and just Christ's presence just light Lights up the whole universe and he comes back in power and great glory and we who are believers along with him riding uh, white horses so uh, believers and angels will return with Christ and then Christ will judge all of the nations in the in the Kidron Valley or the Valley of Jehoshaphat uh, he will return right here on this place this is the highest place on the Mount of Olives so right here is where he ascended and this right here is where he will return in power and great glory the mountain will split in two and um, it's just absolutely incredible. It just makes me uh, shudder to think that I am standing right here in this place and one day I will return with Him in the clouds of heaven and touch back right here with my glorified body right here on the Mount of Olives. So, uh, you know, this uh, makes me ask myself some questions. I really have to ponder uh, this reality. Um, 
Am I living a devoted life? Am I living a, a life that is really serious about following Christ? Am I a real true disciple of Christ who's not following my culture, but I am really uh, locked into following Christ? Uh, am I watchful and ready? Christ said to be watchful and ready for you don't know the hour, the day or the hour. And um, so I, it just makes me uh, reflect and kind of really pause about uh, my life and hopefully maybe uh, you as well. So anyway, uh, fascinating place. Uh, one of my favorites in all of uh, Jerusalem because so much happens uh, right here. So I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, God bless you and thanks for watching.